In previous lessons, we went over several different modulation types, such as continuous modulation, pulse modulation, and digital modulation. For this lesson, we'll be focusing on spread signal modulation, also known as spread spectrum modulation. Now, just to give you a heads up, this lesson is going to be more information only. It will not have any example problems for this video. So let's address the obvious. What is spread spectrum modulation? It's an RF signal spread randomly over a range of frequencies in a noise-like manner. It distributes a signal and allows multiple users to coexist in the same bandwidth. All right, so what this translates to is, it's not broadcasting a signal on a simple carrier wave. It's being distributed randomly over the whole bandwidth. In other words, you're making it very difficult for someone to eavesdrop or jam your signal. Hence why it was created towards the end of World War II, and it's still used by the military today. Also, this is used for civilian use as well, via cell phones. Now that we have a rough idea what spread spectrum modulation is, now we can go a little deeper in the weeds and identify the two common methods. The first method is frequency hopping, FHSS, and it shows a little slight illustration to your right, where it shows a carrier wave hopping over the bandwidth. And then we have direct sequence, which is DSSS, which shows a signal being distributed over the whole bandwidth. So let's look at these methods in a little more detail. We'll start with frequency hopping. Frequency hopping is the method of transmitting data by a carrier that is switched in frequency in a pseudo random fashion. So if you have a bandwidth, it's gonna be broken up or partitioned into slots. Every time the frequency hops, it's gonna to hop to the center of each one of these slots and it's gonna appear random. That's all gonna be determined by the pseudo noise code. Now, every time a unintended receiver listens to a particular frequency, they're only gonna get a blimp of the actual uh, communication. So it's going to appear as noise or an impulse noise. So we have two illustrations. You have a pseudo noise generator. It's going to go to a channel table and this channel table has a list of frequencies and these list of frequencies go to a frequency synthesizer which generates your carrier. And then you're going to have a receiver that matches the same pseudo noise code. And this application is typically used in military use. The other common method is known as direct sequence. Direct sequence is the method of transmitting a narrow band signal and spreading it by directly multiplying it by the wide band pseudo noise code. So the direct sequence generates a pseudo noise redundant code bit pattern for each data bit. This data bit is known as a chip. So unlike frequency hopping where you're actually hopping between particular carrier frequencies, you're actually spreading the whole transmission over the whole band. And this is typically used with wireless communication, such as cell phones. In the previous slides, I mentioned pseudo noise codes, but I didn't really tell you what they mean. Pseudo noise codes are digital codes with pseudo random output data streams that appear to be noise like. Okay, so what does that mean? If you're ever transmitting and receiving data, you want to encrypt it. Using a pseudo noise code is your encryption decoder and encoder. You're going to need that sequence to encode it and then a receiver with that same sequence to decode it. And it's very easy to implement a pseudo noise code. You can use shiv registers, feedback paths, or exclusive OR gates. Now I have the illustration in the middle there with a transmitter and a receiver. I have an input signal, pseudo noise code, and using an exclusive OR gate, it transmits the signal into chips. The receiver receives these chips, has that same pseudo noise code, uses an exclusive OR gate, and it gets the same output as we had in the input, and it's that simple.